Good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning, good morning, Nicole. Come on into the room. Good morning. Hey, be holy. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. You bless my life so much with your message on entrepreneurship. Amen. Amen. Bless you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Amen. Okay. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> I'm going to tell you in a minute, be holy. All right, you guys. While we get these hearts going and um, invite your followers and we are going to keep moving forward. I stumbled across your message and it was timely. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, as people are still coming in, um, the Lord had placed on my heart last night to scope you guys this morning on the subject, why pastors don't teach this on Sundays. Now, this could represent a plethora of different things. That's why it's in quotations and capitalized. Um, because of the fact that I get a lot of questions. Um, people ask me a lot of questions on why certain teachings don't go on in certain churches. And so I wanted to be able to share with you guys why, why certain things are not taught in certain ministries. And so let's begin. All right, so the first reason why uh, your pastor may not teach this, and this could be deliverance, this could be spiritual warfare, this could be prophecy, this could be the fruits of the Holy Spirit, this could be spiritual giftings, this could be um, a variety of different things. Um, whatever it is that your pastor doesn't teach on Sundays, that's what this represents. Okay, so the first reason is the reason why your pastor does not teach this on Sundays is the fact that your pastor may be dealing with some denominational issues. What does that mean? Um, if you go to a primary care church, and I talked about primary care versus specialized ministries on my YouTube page. So if you want to get a, a deeper understanding, go on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash God's house TV. And so if you go to a primary care church where church they teach you the basics about being um, a Christian and then the basics of um, what that actually means, um, more than likely they're not going to go in depth on a lot of different issues because they basically focus on laying the foundation of Christianity. So you, you go to specialized ministries, they go very deep in certain subjects. Uh, they go deep. You know, if it's a deliverance church, they're talking about spiritual warfare. They're talking about demonology. They're talking about angelology. They're talking about all these different things that you will not get out your primary care church. Um, if you go to a church that's really into, um, you know, teaching wisdom and teaching um, prosperity or business, and that's because the mantle that's on that particular pastor's life, then they're going to go deep into how to how to get out of de debt, deep into how to manage your finances, deep, deep, deep. So primary care churches, their purpose is to uh, be more of a holistic concept of how to live in Christ, how to love your neighbor. They have something for every age group, children, adults, teens, da 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 da. They're more of a community church and uh, they deal with uh, the basics and anything that needs to be dealt with that is not in the basics. Um, either they're not equipped to do, they refer out, or they try to handle that discreetly in the church. Uh, but typically, that does not mean that they utilize their specialized churches. Some do, some don't. Okay, so that's the first reason is there's denominational issues. Going deeper into that, um, if you are a part of a denomination or you have attended a denominational church, uh, typically there are traditions in their doctrine that um, state very clear what aspects of the Bible that they actually stand on in that particular denomination. And so if that pastor teaches something outside of that belief system, that could cause a lot of problems for that pastor. 
likewise if that pastor um you know um let's say that that church that that denomination does not believe in women in ministry so but that pastor may but they can't teach that women can be in ministry at that particular church because that is not the denominational doctrine perhaps maybe at, at, at your particular denomination they don't um they don't ordain of uh, the five apostle or prophet or they don't ordain teachers or anything of that nature they only ordain pastors elders and bishops and that's it so they don't acknowledge the five um in the bible so then the pastor can't really teach in depthly about these other offices because it's not acceptable in that denomination good morning dumb so that's why your your pastor can't teach this on Sunday because it may go against what the denominational um denominational background of that particular ministry okay so that's one thing the second reason why your pastor can't teach this um it's because your pastor may not know this okay so your pastor may not have understanding or knowledge in that particular in particular areas that you want to know about perhaps your pastor does not know anything about deliverance um perhaps your pastor doesn't really know how to war in the spirit realm and that their prayer life is more basic maybe because of the fact that their church is more legalistic and they don't really go into depth about those things perhaps um your pastor may not teach about strongholds or generational curses because perhaps maybe they do not good morning mom perhaps they do not um, understand those things or do not believe in those things and so your pastor doesn't know enough to be able to teach those things so what you will find out oftentimes um in, in that in oftentimes in that particular situation um if that pastor is open-minded if that pastor is radical if that pastor understands the need to learn about certain things that he or she does not know sometimes they will bring a minister to come and be a guest speaker at that church to do a workshop or to preach a revival or some type of conference to come and part what is not in that church. I've oftentimes have been that person that would go and I, Baptist churches, Methodist churches, things of that nature, they will come and ask me to come bring the prophetic, ask me to bring the apostolic movement, ask me to bring laying on of hands and healing and all those things into their ministry because they understand that their staff and their church is really, really hurting and they need that fresh wind and they themselves don't do those things so they'll bring in what it is that they need um the hard part is a lot of them don't do that as much as they should because there's a thing in which they're afraid that if another pastor comes and and their pastor is local and another come pastor comes into that church and they preach or, or, or teach something that that church does not provide there that particular pastor is afraid that the members will leave that leave that church and go to the guest speakers church and the fear is real and it happens all the time so typically um, if you, uh, they usually bring out people from out of state. So you wonder why are these pastors bringing people from out of state so much? And it's because there's no threat in the local church about, um, if you preach it so good or preach better than a pastor, or you like their teaching better, more than likely for you to uproot and go to another state, there's gotta be something else going on there. So a lot of times you'll see out of state preachers because people flock old oh, to out of state people because it's new and it's fresh and then two there's no threat that this that, that your flock will actually move and uh, you know move to that particular church and and leave your ministry that way it's real it happens this is why certain things don't get implemented in your church on sundays okay so another reason that and i guess this is three another reason why uh certain things aren't uh taught um on sundays through your pastor or why this isn't taught uh is because perhaps um your church or the congregants in the church aren't ready to receive the word or the knowledge that your pastor actually does know so perhaps that your church is struggling in areas, um, let's say disobedience. And so maybe the pastor can't talk about um, the supernatural and can't talk about 
um, a shift in the way that he or she really wants to and really can't talk about different healings, healings and, and prophecy in that way. Can't really teach it that deeply because, you know, people are disobedient and they have issues loving their neighbors. So your pastor has to teach over and over again in different ways how to love your neighbor over and over and over again because the congregation has not grown past that. So the pastor has to teach where the congregational struggles. So if you have some people that come into the church and they visit and say, every time I talk, come to your pastor, your pastor's always talking about loving your neighbor. What about something else? Well, because that church is fighting. That church is arguing, backbiting, stabbing each other in the back. And this is why the pastor is bringing words of correction every Sunday because they have a disobedient house. And so that may not be because that pastor doesn't know that information. That pastor might have went to seminary. That pastor might really be in depth and can never really show the congregation in this season how much they actually have to know and knowledge and give. So they're writing books or they're or they're doing workshops at other churches with the level of knowledge that they have to give, but they can't give in their own church because they have a very disobedient group been there and done that number four the reason why your pastor does not teach this on Sundays um, is because of the fact that the dynamic in that church does not allow the pastor to have freedom what does that mean there are some um, church systems that where the congregants control the pastor and based upon however that system is documented or or, or doctrinalized, um, the the members know that if they don't like the pastor for one reason or the other, they can quote unquote impeach the pastor. What does that mean? That if the pastor's not teaching what they want, what they like, can't be doing what it is, they have the pastor on a leash because they understand that their tithes and offerings are paying their salary. And if they don't like what the pastor is doing in the church, they can write a nice long letter to the bishop and get that pastor out of there. And you will find in those type of systematic ministries is that um, a group of people will come together to conspire against the pastor for sometimes the pastor needs to be that down and other times people abuse that power because they want someone else in that position sometimes it's a board sometimes it's just the church as a whole as a whole so it depends on the church system okay and they can write nice little letters mean little letters whatever it is to keep people in or keep people out so the pastor feels like he or she has to teach what the people want versus teaching what God wants in that house, which ultimately makes that church stagnant. Uh, they don't really grow. You start um, getting people, the wrong people attracted to the ministry and Jezebel comes right on in and because the, the temperament is totally set and the, you know she could control the pastor and manipulate her through the demons in the, in, in the church and it becomes very sad, very sad and effective. People aren't getting healed. People aren't getting set free. And the pastor is stressed and in bondage and just going through, going through miserable, miserable people. They're very miserable because they have to make a choice. Do I leave my church and possibly not get another church or do I stay here and stick it out? So that's that's what the pastor is going through. Okay, so then I think I'm at number five now. The fifth reason why your pastor does not teach this on Sundays um, is because uh, your pastor may be, um, I don't want to say scared, but there may be some doctrinal teachings that have caused your pastor not to respect some of the things that are in the word that they don't teach. So your pastor may not believe that healings can happen. Your pastor may not believe that there are still prophets in the earth. Your pastor may not believe that demons can possess you. Your pastor may not believe that miracles can still happen. I don't know if I said that. But it's the issue of what, where your pastor is and their knowledge. 
and where they are. And so why some things cannot um, be taught is because your pastor has been denominationalized mentally. So they may believe wholeheartedly what that denomination uh, uh, has put into play and have not opened their mind up to other aspects of the scriptures. And so they don't give any place for God to do something else in them and through the ministry because of, you know, being pocketed in legalism. Okay, so the fifth one, I believe it's the last one. The last one is pastors don't teach this on Sundays because they're in bondage. So they may understand all these things in the scripture and they may know all those things but they're doing those things that are not pleasing to God and so they don't want to preach it okay so if you're at a church and they never talk about sex sins I mean ever they never talk about it one reason could be because maybe that denomination is very secretive about it so if you notice a lot of the teen girls are getting pregnant in the church then we shh hush hush let's never talk about it shh, shh, shh. and so they find that people are getting shunned in the church but it's never discussed because it's always hush hush it's a private matter it's put it under the under the you know the the mat it's a private matter hush 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 but you'll find that some stuff is because the pastor's in bondage you know perhaps they never talking about fornication because maybe your pastor fornicating maybe um your pastor maybe doesn't fornicate now but did very much in the past and has to forgive him himself or herself for what has happened and doesn't want to put out what they used to do um because that's what you find a lot of times pastors don't want to teach out of transparency they want to teach out of um as if they don't do that you know it's just like y'all need to do this 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 and that but they don't want to teach like man i used to struggle with that because some in some um denominational circles to admit weakness to admit um hurt to admit that you were wrong makes you not a strong leader so they don't want to admit that they have been delivered from anything they don't want to admit that they were set free from anything only thing that's acceptable to be set free from is illness so and as long as it's not mental illness then because that could discredit a pastor's ministry just keeping it real so if it's not mental illness but it is a uh, physical illness then it's okay to say i've been healed from um a physical illness but anything else that you used to do in some circles and typically most are systematic and legalistic it's not okay to admit that there's something that you were delivered from so um if they don't mention anything about sex sins then that could mean there's some issues there in their own life if they haven't um you know mentioned anything that had to do like don't do this don't if they don't preach about pride if they don't preach about you know all the seven deadly sins if they don't preach about you know those types of sins and you never ever ever hear it you need to think about perhaps maybe my pastor is struggling in those areas that he or she is not teaching on. So it is so important for us as a body of Christ to be praying for your pastor, to be praying for your church, to pray that God can remove all flesh and demonic activity so that the Spirit of God can come into that church and shift it, that the Spirit of God can shift denominations, that the Spirit of God can just shift even the bishop all the way down um, to to all of the you know pastors and and and, cl and supporting clergy and laity. You, you gotta pr pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. This is why so many people who are in primary care ministries um, often visit specialized ministries from time to time because there's something that's missing in the primary care church. Now, I'm not saying the primary care church is wrong. I'm not saying the primary care church doesn't have its place. I believe the primary care church does have its place, and I believe the specialized church has its place. I believe that they should work together, but that's my perfect utopic uh, idealism of how church should be. However, that is not how it is. 
Oh, bless you, Sister Bonnie. Bless you. Um, so before we get mad at pastors and say, okay, this pastor is not teaching the truth, this, this, and this, consider all the all the things that may be coming up against your pastor on why he or she may not be teaching everything that you think they should be teaching. Consider all of those things. Consider all the political things because everything I, ta I talk about was political except for the whole thing about bondage. And so there's lots of politics involved. This is why you find <clears throat> that some people rather minister in independent churches because you don't get all those politics that come in it and you could just teach as God has called you to. The nominations don't like independent churches because they feel like they're rebellious, they're renegade. Who is to say that they're not doing right or wrong? But it doesn't mean that... Um, a system can be created in a non-denominational independent church that is godly that can bring accountability. But there's a lot of people out there that don't have accountability. So you really have to uh, be able, when you are going to a church, find out your pastor's background. And, you know, you should be a pastor's bio, uh, bio somewhere on the website or on the program and find out who your pastor submits to. Who's, well, who's the pastor's uh, bishop? And the pastor says, well, I don't have one. Then you need to find out why. Why don't they have a bishop? Why don't they have an apostle? What's going on? How did that go? Maybe they're in transition or maybe something happened recently and God had not given them another one yet. But if they say, well, God called me and no man can tell me and I ain't never had one, run. Because they have nobody that pours into them. They don't have nobody to tell them if they're doing wrong up in the church. They ain't got nobody to tell them nothing. But if they're in between and say, well, my apostle passed away or uh, God shifted me in a different direction and God is show and I'm waiting for God to show me who my next apostle is or who my, my next bishop is. or And I'm praying and seeking God and usually that transition is temporary but if they don't come up and say I don't believe in all that then run because that means that abuse of power is going to come in at some point and there's nobody to help that pastor because we all need help and that pastor is going to need help Every even apostles they're going to need help when apostles struggle they go to other apostles for help they're going to need help it's just the way it is something is going to happen that's going to require them to need some counsel from somebody on their level and you need to be able to have those circles or people in place that can pour into you, pour into your ministry. You may need to bring in an apostle to come fix the matter in your church. And you, even though you're an apostle, you may need some reinforcement to come and fix something that might be going on in the church. So if you see two or three apostles together and they handling the situation, then it's a situation, baby. And you need to be able to know that we are are supposed to come into a church and we're supposed to be uh, walking in God's power in the name of Jesus. Well, I pray you find that right church for you, Nicole. You know, um, we're in Detroit, Michigan. So if you come and visit us, uh, we'll definitely love to see you. Um, Dominique, go on and put the website and address up there for Sister Nicole if she uh, is in the area or ever comes in the area. Amen. So, um, Maryland, Georgia, well, amen. Come and visit us sometime if you're in the Michigan area. Amen. So, yeah. Um, so, that's where we are with that. So, be sure that you are finding out what the background is um, based on what God wants you to do, um, where he wants you to go. So, find out questions um, so you know exactly who's leading you who's guiding you with their mentality. Find out where they came from. You may find that you are part of an independent ministry, and but the pastor was has a Baptist background, so the independent ministry may feel more Baptist than it does feel independent, but then you'll be able to understand why. Um, find out the background. And sometimes you may find out their background is one thing, but they preach like totally something else. So find out the information Go visit, find out what's going on, have the Lord show you what's going on in the ministry and see what's happening there. God will uncover some things for you so you know how to pray for your pastor, you know how to pray for the church as a whole, you know how to pray for the covenant or fellowship they belong to, you know how to pray and pray, pray. Guess what? You're not going to find a perfect church. 
You're not going to find anything. Obviously, I'm not telling you to stay in a church that's operating in foolishness because I wouldn't advertise for you to stay there. But I'm, I'm saying that God oftentimes will send you to a place so that you can pray, help pray for them to, to push and break through to that next level. And so God may want you to use what's in you to go and help that ministry. Because if the ministry is trouble and everybody leaves, how does that ministry grow? So you have to find out what is your assignment in that church. And you may not have to have a title to have an assignment in that church. And you could go at home and pray. You might not have to be a minister in that church. God just called you just to pray. And there's a lot of pillars that are in ministries that are not quite given a title, but they are steadfast unmovable and they are, are called to pray for that church and pray for that pastor because a lot of pastors don't have people praying for them like that they just don't a lot of people are scared to really pray for the pastor because of the tax that come on a pastor's life tax that come on a bishop's life tax that come on an apostle's life there's some attacks that uh, lay folk don't know nothing about because they're getting attacked on the stuff that, that's going on in your life. So they pray for you. Them demons going to be looking for them. And so you talking about, oh, I just feel better. Thank you after you done prayed for me. And they may not have said nothing, but they may be going through some hell just because they prayed for you. Okay? All right? So let's really keep it real. Talking about, I don't know why every time I come up to the prayer line, past they pray, past them might not have what's going on. They might be tired because the last time they prayed for you, your demons came after them before they got home. And pastor need to get strong before they come up there and praying for you some more. Because what's on your life is a lot of chaos, okay? And last but not least, and this really don't have a lot to do with of this, be taught in the church but when you go and do some mess and then come to your church and expect the pastor to fix it that's a shame before god you know you messy stop going on messing up your life and then it's inspecting the pastor to be some magician to wipe away all your sins first of all christ wipes away your sins the pastor is supposed to give you the word of god and you're supposed to apply it your pastor is not called to apply those things to your life you're called to apply those things to your life and that's the pastor world so some people get into a mess just so they can go to their past and say fix it and then they go back and get it back into their mess that's all right i'm just gonna see uh uh my bishop my apostle my pastor because they they's a praying man of god they's a praying woman of god they're gonna get me straight and that's abuse of the man and woman of God. You are draining them on purpose. Okay? There's the assignment on your life you don't know about that's coming to drain the man and woman of God. The devil's a liar. You better take that word and let that word corrupt you and get in your spirit. And your pastor should not be doing deliverance on you every doggone time you come to church because you're getting caught up every week. I just got something to say. Okay? So let's continue. God bless you, Sister Bonnie, for your healing campaign. Hallelujah. That sound powerful. Woo! Bless you, Nicole. So yeah, those are the reasons. So I'm giving you this message not because I'm trying to out pastors or anything of that nature. I'm just trying to give you this so you can have compassion for your pastor. Won't be talking about the church ain't effective and this, that, and that. No, you just find out there's a lot of demons after pastors. A lot of demons through the spirit of politics and a lot of stuff going on in the head. And your pastor going through hell just to try to make sure that you get the bread every Sunday. Uh -huh. I didn't even talk about Bible study or midweek service. Okay? So, have compassion. Um, pray for them. And hold on and hang on. Listen to the Lord. And, what, and, and ask the Lord, what do you call me to do in this ministry? This ministry. So it may not have a label on it. Your pastor may not know that you're praying for them. You do not necessarily have to tell them that I am praying for your strength. But they're going to feel that somebody is praying for them. Okay? God bless y'all. I know I got saw a wealth of comments down there. But I really just, sorry I didn't want to lose my, my, lose my flow reading them. But bless you, Sister Bonnie. Bless you, Nicole. Bless you, Dom, and everybody else on the scope. So, I appreciate you guys um, coming on. And I, I really hope that this will be a, is a blessing to people as they continue to grow um, as sheep and know how to pray and support and honor your pastors. Amen. Okay, Dominique, put this one on YouTube, boo. This one's a good one. All right?
God bless y'all and y'all have an amazing morning in the Lord.